Sorry, comedian habit. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm Gavin Burr. I'm reading uh, Stripper Rash by my friend John Wayne Communale. There's a first time for everything, but sometimes you experience more than one first at a time. This happened to me about two weeks after my 18th birthday when I went to a strip club for the first time and also had my first experience what I've come leveling to, lovingly referring to as stripper rash. I'm not the only one nervous up here. Uh, I'm getting my, ahead of myself though, so let's take it back a few steps. When I was 18, I worked at a store that sold video games for both computers and consoles, which was a cool job at the time because I worked with some really fun, borderline insane people. I didn't know much about video games or dick all about computers, but I got by mostly on my looks. We have that in common. Over the year, a couple years I worked there, we had many adventures and cooked, cooked up quite a few capers, but none that left me with more egg on my face than this one. My good friend Nick P was my boss at the store, and his assistant was a guy named Matt who was still the craziest ass white person I've ever met. The three of us had been joking about going to a strip club one afternoon after work. How cool would that be until Nick slammed his hands down on the counter to let us know that shit was about to get real. You're 18 now, right, Poindexter? Nick said, pointing at me. I was like, yeah, you were at my birthday party, man. <laughs> Perfect, said Nick P, stroking his beard. I know just the place. It turned out that this place was fantasy. Ah, uh, yes, that fantasy. That gem of a strip club located on the feeder of I-45, flashing its neon sign at approaching travelers to lure them in with its visual siren song. The thing about fantasy is it does not sit, sell alcohol and is 18 and up, so I would be able to get in. You're allowed to bring in your own booze, though, as long as you pay a, a cooler fee or a bottle fee. This loophole also makes for an interesting uh, little caveat, being that the dancers, rather than being just topless, were fully nude. Okay. I know it sounds awesome, but not everything turns out to be as awesome as you make it out to be in your head. Matt and I were left to close the store while Nick P would gather uh, supplies and be back to pick us up. Luckily, I had a few items to freshen up in my backpack before he returned. It was a uh, deodorant, a new cologne my mom had bought me for my birthday, <laughs> and a small bottle of mouthwash. I administered a heavy application of all three to my body as soon as we closed up. When Nick came back, we found out his supplies consisted of a cooler of beer, a bottle of whiskey, and two freshly rolled blunts. Right? We smoked one of the blunts on the drive there, which did nothing to curb my anxiety over going to a strip club for the first time. By the time we pulled up, I was high as balls, sweating from the nerves, and already supporting a, uh, already supporting a confusing half chub. We walked through the door. Anyway, I attributed the latter to hormones more than anything else. Since everything from my history book to a painting of my dead grandmother gave me the boner at, a, at that time in my life. The cover charge was 20 bucks, but we had to pay an additional 20 uh, to bring in the cooler and a second payment for the whiskey. We ended up spending more money bringing in the booze than we paid for the cover charge. Still, uh, it was a sound investment. I had a wristband to signify I was under 21, but Matt assured me I would still be able to drink. We walked into the darkness of the main room, immediately assaulted by the smell of coconut and baby powder. <laughs> to this day, those smells always make me think of boobs, <laughs> which as you can imagine, can be really awkward when I'm around friends that have kids. I followed behind Mac and Nick P with my head on a swivel, taking in what I could of my surroundings, causing full sensory overload. 
I didn't know what I thought a strip club would be like, but I knew it wasn't what I was seeing currently. <laughs> the place was dark, sure, but not dark enough to hide the filthy disrepair of the place. Large patches of carpet were stained black. A smattering of Swiss cheese-like cigarette burned holes dappled the floor like tiny moon craters. The music was loud and the girl on stage looked sick, distant and withered. She was not like the strippers I had seen in Motley Crue videos that were... They were enthusiastic about their chosen profession. How could the crew have lied to me? Would the crew lie to me? Either way, it was a definite boner kill. We set up shop at a table, breaking out the beers, placing our whiskey on the table between us. I continued taking in this new experience while casually sipping beer, trying to act like watching sad girls dance naked while underage drinking was something I did all the time. <laughs> Suddenly, someone pulled up a chair and joined us at our table, a naked somebody. It was one of the dancers, but she was not like the A-team type material, if you catch my drift. She was super skinny in that unhealthy, I smoke crack kind of way. And when she smiled, her teeth echoed the sentiments of unhealthy and I smoke crack. Of course, never have been, having been in this kind of situation, I froze up. But Matt and Nick P took the reins and we started chatting her up. She was talking into Matt P's ear since the music was so loud and pointed to the cooler. I guess she was asking for a drink because she pulled out a beer and uh, he pulled out a beer and handed it to her. So she sat there talking to the two of them with her mouth against their ears trying to interest them in a lap dance or a trip to a private room. She gestured to the whiskey, snatched it up and took three long pulls. Then she turned her attention to me. She scooted up her chair close to mine and brought her snaggletooth maul to my ear. <laughs> breathing her hot whiskey crack breath against the side of my face and neck. She was trying to coax me into some sort of private interaction with her, which I wanted nothing to do with. I politely declined, but she persisted, not being one to give up easily. Finally, she got the hint and backed away from me, but the thick cloud of rank stripper breath hung heavy in a cloud around my face. She got angry called us a bunch of cheap, rude, prude assholes, and took off in a huff. We didn't say much longer after that. Uh, after about an hour, Nick P. dropped me back off at my car. I went home not entirely sure how to feel about my first strip club experience. I still jerked off, because it's the right thing to do. While brushing my teeth the next morning, I saw something that made my heart stop. Across the side of my neck was a concentrated collection of bumpy red welts, some with pus-filled white heads sitting atop them, like tiny, disgusting crowns. I ran my finger against the irritated bumps to confirm that they were real as a total panic began to set in. The stripper had gave, given me a rash on my neck. I had stripper rash, and I had no idea what to do. I showered, cleaning my neck with as many different soaps and facial cleansers I could find. I even applied an astringent, which burned, but did nothing to help. I couldn't let my parents see me like this, so I stayed in my room and immediately called Nick P. and Matt for help. Nick P. and Max examined my neck when I got to work and had no prognosis other than it looked pretty ugly. I was genuinely worried, but they uh, again assured me that I would be fine. They didn't have any rashes and would most likely go away on its own. I hope so. Because the last thing I wanted to do was explain to my mother that I needed to go to the doctor because some stripper gave me neck gonorrhea. <laughs> so I took a Benadryl, worked my shift, and by the end of the night, the rash had diminished significantly. When I woke up the next day, it was completely gone, and I couldn't have been happier. The strip rash had stayed gone for most of the week until I had went out with a family for dinner where it made its return. I had showered, 
gotten dressed, spritzed myself with the clone without a thought of the stripper rash in my head. Halfway to the restaurant, I was scratching at my neck and found similar bumps had returned. I ducked in the bathroom upon arrival, and sure enough, stripper rash was back. <laughs> but now it was across my entire neck. Yeah. <laughs> Horrifying. The jig was up, and it was time to bite the bullet. I hung my head and walked to the table ready to tell my parents how a stripper had infected my neck. And we should probably leave now and head to a hospital. I abs absently sat, scratched as I sat down and my mother noticed it right away. What happened to your neck, she asked. I'm not entirely sure, but... Oh, it looks like you're allergic to something, my dear, she said. Have you been using a different soap? Or cologne or something? Holy shit, the cologne. <laughs> that ha had to be it. Yeah, I said a little too happily. I think it might be the cologne now that I think about it. <laughs> That's too bad, she said. Give it to your brother if you can't use it. And that was the end of the conversation and I couldn't wait to get home. I was confident the cologne was the cause, but I needed to test the theory before I put my concerns to bed. And now I can conduct my test. I sprayed the cologne across my forearm and nothing else and then waited. Sure enough, not 20 minutes later, the rash had spread across my arm in an area I applied the cologne to proving my hypothesis. I told Nick and Matt about the discovery and they said they had already forgotten about that had it even happened. <laughs> But they maintained I was an indeed an idiot. <laughs> Maybe that's true, but I was a happy idiot and I still am. I've since gone on to have many successful strip club experiences, <laughs> but never have I gone back to fantasy. Still, I do pass it almost every day and wonder about that lonely scrub of a stripper who I thought was responsible for afflicting my neck. But then, the, then I rest easy knowing she's probably gone on to infect, infect many necks and other body parts since then. Everyone has a purpose in life, and she's out there fulfilling hers to her fullest. The end. Thank you very much.